Hey everybody, welcome back, Devin the OG, the original Grog. I don't know why I'm doing that with my hands now. It's just I don't know. Well, maybe we'll keep it. Maybe we won't. <laughs> OG, original Grognard, playing campaign Leipzig, John Tiller Software Battle at Denovitz. I am playing this PPEM against my buddy Ross, and he and I are both recording the uh, videos and putting them up nearly simultaneous, so you can watch the game from both sides of the battlefield. We we. Never, I've never really actually seen anybody do that before, so we think it's a really cool thing. And please don't mention, don't make comments in either of our, our channels about uh, whatever the other person is doing. We're trying to keep this as much of a gentleman's agreement as possible. Uh, well, I only had one unit route this time. Apologies to everybody for me being a little bit cranky in the last video. Um... Talk to Ross about it. I knew it was an issue. I've never seen it this this way in ACW titles, um, but evidently it's just yeah, it it, it's, it happens in AC or it happens in Tiller titles, but not as much as I've seen it in in ACW titles with people running away. So I'm kind of glad I only had one unit run away this time. Talk to Ross. He says he's had the same issue. He's got guys running away and they're disrupting and doing all kinds of bad things in his backfield as well in the woods where I can't see. So I guess as long as both of us are being affected by it, eh, all right, we'll deal. Turn seven. All right, what happened? Well, yeah, well, I got one guy that was routing. He continued to route, and this guy back here, rat, gee, he can't even move that far normally. Uh, most of some of these guys have come back. Those guys are disordered now, so we've only got really two guys that are that are currently routing. Um, so what has happened? Some gunshots along here. He moved this guy up. I'm not gonna try chasing him. Oh, we've lost one gun. How'd that happen? I didn't even notice that. Um, so I'll just move my reserves up to here and deal with them there. Uh, I do have a hole here, but I've got Cossacks back here, which should be able to deal with skirmishers. So I'll charge my. I, probably don't have the movement uh but this guy right here the guns are all by themselves i'm gonna have to shorten the line that way or bring some of these skirmishers back up uh but anyways um he's got a lot of artillery on this hill over here uh what are we overlooking uh nita gorsdorf Lots of artillery. He's moving into position here. He's got a bunch of cavalry that he looks like he's pulled back and I'm guessing that's in response to my cavalry moving up over here. Possibly, he thinks, Prussian cavalry, uh, that his troops... Of course, if he only knew, I was quality D, but whatever. If that pulls his cavalry back, I'm fine with that. And definitely continue to move up towards Goldstorff. Uh... Yeah, he's moving a bulk of his core. He's peeling them off and definitely pulling them away from moving up to this engagement here and has shown no interest in Uterborg so far, so I, I'll, I'll take that as a win. Um, yeah, he just continually moved troops up here. This, I'm going to have to move my cavalry to screen over here because they're going to have to buy time for this core, 5th core, or 5th brigade to move into position and then of course when my second core comes on and starts moving right in so i yeah i have a feeling this area right here and i, I mentioned that yesterday or the, the last video that this is probably going to be where most of the bulk of the fighting is going to be um so yeah i just uh, i just guess i gotta move some stuff around and we'll come back for ger shooting and uh ger fighting yes i know they're not real words all right, that wasn't as painful as it has been. Um, I did want to point out real quick, as everybody knows, I've been lamenting my skirmisher formations here and not knowing where their parent units are. Uh, a sharp-eyed viewer, Mark, and his last name escapes me because I had two Marks that were actually commented on the last video. Um, we come to find out those are actually independent skirmish companies, not from any, uh, broken apart from any uh, parent uh, regiment. So... That sets my mind at ease on that, so I, I don't have to worry about trying to merge them in because there's nothing to merge them with. They're just their own independent companies. The one thing that has proven to be a bit of a pain in the butt for me is now I've got this big traffic jam, as I knew was going to happen, as I've got three brigades trying to push down the same road. Part of me thought, well, this brigade 
and I'll eventually get the numbers down. Third Brigade is going to be coming down and lining up kind of uh, my anchor over by Niedergorstorf. So I thought maybe just start pushing these guys through the through the fields. But then I realized I'm only going to be moving two he- or three hexes at most of the fields where I can get five on the road. So I'm going to – this the, the lead brigade here, fourth brigade, is going to take up lines around Volmsdorf. Third brigade – okay, I got it right that time – is going to follow the road down and peel off and take up positions in these these fields here, whereas – Sixth Brigade is also going to come down the same road, but they're going to peel off and set up on my right flank over Wolmsdorf. Reason I'm going doing it in that order: these guys are going to finish, then then the Yellow Brigade, then the then the Khaki Brigade. Uh, just easier for me to say it that way, I guess. I'm not as worried about getting these guys quickly into position because I've got this big ass uh, core or brigade of cavalry, and they will keep him keep Ross hopefully from pushing too far until I get that uh, until I get my other brigade down there in position uh, and then the final brigade back here that they're just gonna go wherever I need them as as a reserve and then of course when my other core comes on and let's take a look at that command info no not info units scheduled yeah starting at 130 and it's like 12 now so it's still a few turns away um, before I start getting my reserves, and of course that entire core will trickle on for the next four and a half hours. Four and a half hours to pass the same position. I don't even want to think about that type of marching. Um, over here, where the fighting's going on, pulled my cavalry back more because now hopefully this this will start to threaten his flank here. Um, and I just wanted to get away from those guns. I just, <laughs> I, the, he's got skirmishers out. He's, if I started moving my cavalry into position, he's just going to put them into square formation anyways. So my dreams of tapping those guns eh, quickly ran away. However, he does have these guns here that don't seem to have any supporting infantry. And I've got a little detachment of cavalry here. The problem is getting across that bridge. Yeah. I could come up. I don't think I disrupt. I don't think cavalry disrupts if I go against, go across a stream. But I'm fairly certain they disrupt if I go across a creek. But there's two bridges here, and if he sets up and starts shooting at those bridges, then I kind of know what it, that he's gonna, you know, that he's trying to keep my cavalry. So these guys are gonna try to make a, a, a dash, and I say that because it's it's still what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 20 hexes, it's still four turns for me even getting close to them. Five turns maybe even, because I'm only moving like three hexes through the fields. Stupid movement penalties. Uh, screened more, uh, shifted more down a little way this way. Again, as long as his guys are in, in square formation here, he's not advancing on me. And if I'm pulling more and more of his cavalry off, that's fine. These guys are all sacrificial lambs anyways, so as long as that's even pulling more of this cavalry off, that will give me more freedom to get into position in Wolmsdorf and Niedekorsdorf. I'm fine with that. All right, uh, so now we have some Gershutin. <clears throat> all right, my cannon is not going to try to continue turning around and chasing him. Uh, so what we're going to do is we've got this guy. He's going to move here, and he's going to blast away. Of course, he's got all these squadrons of, of, of cavalry, so hopefully we can we can do something. Ooh, and they're, ooh, 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 they're disrupted. Should I charge? I don't have a leader there. Nine men. His return fire. Two men. And a skirmisher. Pop! I always tell the skirmishers just a single pop. It's kind of in the uh, like uh, militia units or partisan troops in uh, in modern warfare, and you got this big massive machine gun fire for normal infantry, and then when the partisan is pink, 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 <laughs> it makes me chuckle. Don't judge me. All right, let's see where are my where are my leaders. Leaders on top. Oh, I do have a leader here. You know what? I think I am going to take Obest Rango, move him there, and then assault. Should I assault? Yes. Let's do it. We want him. We want. We want him to think we've got teeth here. 
Besides which, he's disrupted. I'm in good order. I have a leader. This should go well for me. I'm quality C. Hey, there we go. There we go. Now these cavalry will just be able to run those guys down with no problem. All right. Um, right. Let's see. So the infantry here. What does he got here? Skirmisher, skirmisher. Guns. Ugh. Uh, all right. Let's take the infantry. I actually, well, I may not even be able to shoot because it's skirmishers there. Oh, I can't shoot through the skirmishes. Okay. Should I shoot at the guns? Should I shoot at the end the skirmish? No, we'll shoot at the guns. I do not like fixating too much on the on skirmishers because I know they what they can do and what they can't do. All right, let's turn visibility hexes on. All right, so okay, we've got good sight here, but here we can only see there. So let's fire at the cannons again right there all right here now we're starting to see his line here we got skirmishers two guns he's got infantry two guns all right so let's go ahead and take this infantry and fire at his infantry <clears throat> six men and eh. uh i got 612 men not in range of anything and but i'm gonna get hammered on by those guns not gonna advance until i clear out these skirmishes over here which is probably gonna happen next turn uh da, da, da. we'll take this infantry and i'm not facing the target of course i'm not uh so we'll take the artillery uh, fire there i gave some bad bugle calls right here and if i actually he's not yet yeah, rosk actually can't see that so i moved some skirmishers wanted to detach the leader moved the skirmishers back by accident left the leader yeah because i wanted to get this the the leader back to these disordered guys uh um gotta gotta check out general marshall general marcel or major yeah well whatever it is for the for the prussian order uh rank order gm it's rather high ranking in fact, he's, uh, yeah, Infantry 4th Corps commander. Um, so, yeah, these skirmishers did not get as back far up as I would have liked them. Um, I had these Cossacks and Lancers that were one back. Would like to charge these uh, skirmishers just to clear them out. But I know, again, they're in fields. I'm only going to be moving three hexes, so move them up one hex. Part of me was tempted to move him up one more hex, but if for some reason he decides to advance the skirmishers up, we'll be right next to each other. And with the rules that we're using right now, we need at least one hex between each other to initiate a charge. I could just melee with him, but it won't be a charge. Now, if he moves up here and sees that I have Cossacks and Lancers, he may decide to just move up to, to negate that, that one ability of mine. And I will admit that is kind of a flaw in the gentleman's agreement that we do have is that, yeah, you can kind of negate a cavalry charge if you can see it setting up. Is it unrealistic? Probably, but again, Ross is, Ross is a gentleman when it comes to things, and I don't think he would do that on purpose. Um, so yeah, these Lancers and Cossacks are getting ready to... Assault these skirmishers next turn, basically. Uh, and what do we got here? We've got eight guns. And no, I'm not going to waste eight guns, fine canister into skirmishers. We're going to shoot at his infantry. Those guys are disordered. Those guys are not. Those guys are disordered. But those are... Yeah, there's 600 men there. we got to unleash the... Oh, I can't even see those. Poopy. Uh, and I'm not facing the right way for that. So, those guys... They're disrupted. Yeah... Oh! <laughs> 46 men. Love to see that. Love to see that out of my beautiful six pounders. All right. Yeah, we like to see that. All right. This is some good news coming back my way from the last two turns. Uh, we've got uh, cannon up here. What do we got? 400 men, 300 men. Let's go ahead and just shoot at the closest. 15 men. Not as good as 46, but I'll take it. Well, plus those are, that's half size, so those are only four guns. All right, so there's that. What have I got there? I got, oh, I've got a squadron of Cossacks back there. Did they not? Oh, they did not get moved up. So let's take the Cossacks, get him up with his brethren. All right, so now we've got normal infantry fire, and here we are going to be blasting away at skirmishers. So let's just go ahead and shoot at the units that let's go ahead and soften up the targets of the Cossacks this turn. Two men, eh, the skirmishers, and then that that's that's 
that's to be expected. I think another one of my sharp-eyed viewers mentioned that uh, skirmishes only take one-fifth normal damage anyways. So uh, these guys are disordered, and they're disordered, so we'll just fire disordered into disordered skirmishers. Two men. That's actually more than I was expecting. Uh, let's see. Let's turn on fired. All the units that have fired. Uh, okay, those guys might be able to fire at those skirmishers. There we go. Maybe two or three casualties. No effect. Yeah, again, no surprise. They fired. They fired. They're turned the wrong direction to fire at those skirmishers, so we'll leave them. They've all moved. And uh, Lieutenant General Tannenstein. If I, if my, if my poor eyes are reading that correctly, town it sign. Yep. Uh, okay. I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think, uh, I think this turn is definitely, uh, uh, redeemed ourselves. So let's talk about potential. I have no idea what's right in here and I have no idea what's in these woods. He could be pushing more troops up in an effort to try to blow me off of this hill line. Or he could be pulling... Well, again, he's pulled off a, some line units and some artillery. I'm guessing he's going to have some line units coming up to give them some support. I don't see him leaving those units out there, those artillery units out there, without support. Um, so this may be everything that he's uh, decided to allocate towards trying to take my position here now is it more than enough yes it's more than enough um the only thing that's really slowing him down from advancing and really outflanking me and as you can see he's got a line established but he is moving up on my weak flank here so what i'm probably going to have to do i need to keep his cavalry pinned down so my cavalry is going to be staying over there they're out of this fight right now these cossacks and lancers are going to have to try to break these two skirmishers and which they probably will do, and no problem. And then pull back, and and I'll have to set them up over on. Whoops! I have no idea why my Discord just popped up like that. Um, I have to set them up over here on this flank to keep these guys honest. Uh, also, something nice as long as as soon as I take out this guy as well, then I can start shifting the line over more because I think this is about the farthest extent. Of his, of his left flank. So that will allow me to shift over two, position, two hexes to bring my line to here, which will force him to go even further out. But he's probably, if he, if he moves too far out unsupported, then my cavalry can hit him from behind. See, now if I was playing against the AI, I know what the AI would do. And I, you know, I'd be able to, just, all right, I'm sitting right where I'm at. But playing against a human player, it's a little bit different. And Ross is good. I got to give him that. So hopefully I'm keeping him on his toes and giving him a little bit of headache and heartache. Um, so I guess that's all I got for this video. Um, so yeah, I'll shoot this off to Ross and I'll be back in a little bit. Well, it'll be a little bit for you, it'll be seconds for you or even a second for you. Maybe a couple few hours for me, but I'll be back. Holy crap, nobody ran away this time. Nobody routed. I'm considering that a victory in, in, in its own right. Yes, it is. Okay, turn eight, stepping into turn eight. All right, what's happening? Um, his cavalry is remaining static over here. They didn't move any, but he is definitely moving more cavalry this direction towards me to support. So I'm I. I can't let both of his cavalry get together because both of his detachments of cavalry get together. It's, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do something. I'm gonna have to feint towards him to try to draw him out and maybe catch some of his units, you know, in a position where I can charge him. Um, the two skirmishers that he had right here, he did pull back, so that frees up the lancers and my cossacks. I'm gonna shift them over uh, further on my left flank. Uh, his cannon shots just devastated me. Thirty casualties. Uh, one shot for 24 and one shot for six. I, I got a squadron of 11 now. I, I can't take those type of casualties from that artillery. I have no idea. Those are probably 12 pounders. I would guess they're 12 pounders. Lots more artillery. Well, not lots more, but a couple more artillery units. Definitely moving more up along the line. 
I have a feeling he's going to be using the creek to screen from my cavalry. And as you do notice, he does have infantry support. So this cavalry, can he, yeah, he kind of has an idea there. There, they're going to shift back up around the stream and see both, both of these cavalry detachments are going to shift that way and see what, uh, see what I can do uh, to sneak up on, well, not sneak up, try to sneak up on his artillery. Um, lots more infantry movement. He is definitely pushing on Wilmsdorf. He's got cavalry all the way out here past uh, Golsdorf now. So I need to get my cavalry up here by Dalekau down quickly. So he's, that's probably a reconnaissance force. I want to keep him from finding out too much of where the rest of the core is at. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all that we've had. Um, so let me go ahead and do my movement and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Uh, into what did I do? Um, again, just moving the cores up towards Wilmsdorf. Or Wilmsdorf. Uh, I did start shifting my cavalry over here to take advantage of crossing over the stream. I should probably open up the, uh, the terrain effects chart just to make sure that they can cross the stream without being disrupted. Because that will probably change my mind. Um, just moving the cores forward. Moving the cavalry forward. Now moving the core, or the brigade forward. Yada, yada, yada. Nothing exciting on that part. Not going to end up charging this poor little infantry unit. Oh, this is where my inexperience with the game engine comes into play. You need to declare movement or declare a charge before you moved. I moved both of my units up to get them in a better position and then click the charge button and it said, no, you can't do that because you're a dummy. So no charge this turn, but probably next turn. Um, move skirmishers up. Since he moved his skirmishers up, I pulled my cavalry back and I'm going to put them over here to try to stymie this little press that he's doing here on my right flank. Um, so let's shoot at some stuff. Oh, and I did kind of pull my cavalry. I kind of making it appealing for him. There's a couple places this guy can charge if he wants to charge here or here, but that'll put me in position to be able to... Actually, I should probably angle them... Uh, if he charges, then I can counter charge, but not trying to commit everything, maybe just trying to, I don't think it'll trick him into, into charging with those guys, but it might, who knows? Uh, we got to try something, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start some shooting. Seven men, not as many as I would have liked. Uh, what do we got here? Let's fire at the cannons. And that's not facing target, and I don't think he can... Oh, he can see somebody right there, so let's... Mm, skirmishers are cannons. Pointless to fire at the skirmishers, pointless to fire at the cannons, but we'll fire at the cannons anyways. Fatigue always helps. And pour some more fire from the mine units. Uh, I haven't fired with the... Oh, they're low ammo. Where's my, where's my supply wagon at? supply wagon over there. Okay, now oh, there's a supply wagon back here. Let's bring it forward as well. Uh, should I charge here? Should I charge here? No, I don't think we're gonna... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and charge. <laughs> or melee. Yeah. Should be able to still charge up over the hill next turn. Um, of course, you'll no, I probably shouldn't have charged because now he's just going to move him into the woods. It's going to be pointless for me to move or try to try to charge. That's okay. I'll just pull him back into the line. So they've fired, fired, fired these guys. Let's see. Yep, just straight down that infantry unit. And let's have skirmishers shoot at each other. Right here. Uh, those guys, they can't see anybody but, or they can't, they don't have the range to shoot anybody but skirmishers. I'm going to have to fire at skirmishers. Pop. Uh, 
Um, yeah, same thing. These guys have only the only thing they can fire at is skirmishers. And the cannon, however, has a couple different targets. We've got 300 and 200, but it's pointed the wrong direction, so we're going to fire there. Let's see, those guys can't shoot at anything. Those guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, let's first of all, let's take the infantry. Fire at the skirmishers. Probably should have shot at these guys instead. Alright, cannon. What can they see? There, there, there. Let's fire there. Oh, not facing target. Yeah, that. Oh, I guess it's not. Poo. Um. All right, we'll fire right there. Then. Uh, let's take the skirmishers. Fire at the line troops. And take the line troops and fire at the line troops. Eleven men. Okay, we can live with that. Did it disrupt? I don't think I'll know until next turn anyways. Uh, line troops into skirmishers, because i got nothing else to shoot at. Nothing in range. Pop. And then we'll fire straight down the line. There we Oh, 30 men. Good. We like that. Okay, we like that. We like that. Um, I think that's going to be it for anybody who can shoot. Take a look. Burr, burr, burr. They can't shoot. Yeah, that looks like everybody who's going to be able to fire. All right. Well, um, yeah. So we're starting to form up a plan, and uh, we'll we'll have to see what happens when we get the next turn back. Really irritated at myself that I couldn't pull off the charge. I was really hoping to show y'all a charge. Maybe we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. I'll see everybody later.